What's going on guys? It is Andrew here. So in today's video, we're going to talk about Keepa. Now keep in mind, there's so many different data points when it comes down to Keepa. You're not going to be able to learn everything that you need to learn just from this 10 to 15 minute video. However, in my entire program, you learn everything that you need to know. So if you want to get started, you can. But for now, enjoy this free Keepa training. We're going to kind of dive deep into the data points that you need to learn as a beginner basic Amazon seller. So let's dive straight into it and not waste any time here. So we're on a Nike listing right here. You can see this entire listing does 8,000 sales per month. And realistically, there's about two different variations on this listing. So really we have white eight through 12 and we probably have a black uh, large, which eight through 12 is probably the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at this specific black listing. Now keep in mind that the keeper chart does change depending on what listing you go to. So for example, you can see how it looks like right now. Keep that in mind. Now let's go to the white version and click this and it's going to change. So you see how that just changed right there? This looks different, completely different than the one we just did. So keep it chart does change based on the variation that you pick. Now there's a couple of different settings that I would like to for the most people to see. First off, I like to see sub ranks. You don't have to see sub ranks, but you can if you want to. Um, I like to have the buy box always up. I like to have the new always up. Um, I like to have the review count always up because I want to see the reviews are doing. I want to see the offer count. Consistently, consistently there. And I generally like to have it in the year range time frame. Um, so if you're looking to set it up, this is exactly how I would specifically set yours up. Now, keep in mind this little pink line right here and this also little blue line right here, this top blue line, this is the actual buy box. So the pink is that buy box. Now when the buy box goes away, um, that's when you see the blue right here. The buy box is this little thing right here. So if we get rid of the keep it chart right here, and now we just look at this. This is what the buy box actually is, right? So for example, there might be 101 people selling on this listing right now. Probably so many people selling on this listing because there's so many sales go around. There's over 8,000 sales per month on this listing. So plenty of sales to go around for 100 people. But out of all the 100 people, only one person is going to get the buy box currently. And it's this actually person right here. Now, the buy box is dependent on a bunch of different variables. But if you actually hover over right here, you can see that sometimes it's an FBM seller. So let's kind of pause right here. Um, currently right now it says our, the buy box in the little pink line right there. It says 2732 FBA and, it's, and the buy box is being won by NTR slash box. Now, if we zoom in really quick here, we just put our mouse down and zoom in. We can see that if we hover over this and change this, it's going to consistently change. Like every like couple minutes it's changing. So one, one second it's here. Now it's at FBM. So right now, the current buy box is being won by someone that actually has FBM, not FBA, which means fulfilled by a merchant. So if you look right there in the little pink box again, you're going to see the little blue FBM. So it does tell you if it's, if it's being won by somebody that has the FBA buy box or FBM. Also something to keep in mind that if, if you have FBA versus FBM, which means fulfilled by Amazon, means all your product is actually at Amazon's warehouse and they can fulfillment with Prime for two to three days. That specifically means that a lot of times you can actually win the buy box at a higher price. So if you see those little spikes right here, and you're wondering why is the price jumping from 27 all the way to $35 a lot of times, it's because Amazon rewards people that have FBA. So you can consistently have a, you know, the, you know, your price, you know, 10, 15, 20% higher than the FBM price and get the buy box at a higher, um, you know, price. So for example, right here, Martin's merchandise. Um, they have FBA, you can see it in the bottom left hand corner, it says orange FBA and their price is $34.87. But if you move it slightly over here, and also this is merch two for you, $34.29 having the buy box that high. But if you move it right here, boom, it drops down to $26.37. So it's much more profitable to have your products FBA versus FBM. That's what this pink buy box is right here. Now, this little green bar that you see right here, this is the actual sales rank. So Believe it or not, the lower the sales rank, the better. So we want a sales rank, obviously, the closer to, you know, one, it's really good. Now, a thousand sales rank for clothing is extremely high. So if you see something in clothing in the outdoor, or not in the outdoor brand, but in the clothing category, and you see that it has a sales rank under a thousand, that means it's selling 8,000 times per month currently, because this listing is selling over 8,000 times per month. And right now it's actually, um, the sales rank is 1800 or 1500. So, um, it fluctuates, you know, consistently from anywhere between 700 and a thousand. And this doesn't matter too much right now. For some seasonality, it, it will. You can also see too right here, the sales rank was low 500, 300 
But when all of a sudden the buy box for some reason went away, and I don't know if this what happened to this listing, but the sales rank did dramatically increase to you know 23, 2500. So the sales could have went down from like eight thousand over to like five or six thousand. Now, this little blue bar that you see down here, this is the actual offer count. So you can actually right now over the entire last year, there's actually the most people currently selling this offer right now. Now this is super important because there's a couple of reasons. One, this is competition, but as you can see right here, it doesn't really matter that there's a hundred people on this listing because it's still selling 8,000 times per month. I mean, if you just did basic math right here, 8,000 divided by hundred, that's going to be 80 sales per person. Now, realistically, you could pro let's go ahead and pull up the seller amp really quick here. They're probably getting these for about, I would say about $12, maybe $13 each. Let's just put 12, let's just put 13. And right now the FBA price is about $34, right? So they're making about $9 profit per unit. Now, if you completely divide this evenly, and that's just saying it's evenly, but if your price competitively, you're actually gonna get even more sales. But let's just say it is even with the 8,300 sales and the 100 people actually on this listing, it's gonna come out to about 80 sales per person. So if you have 80 sales and you multiply that times nine, 80, times nine, that's going to be about $720 of net profit per person on this listing. So when somebody says, hey guys, Amazon FBA is saturated, that's just not actually accurate because there's still $720 profit per person to go around on this one listing. And this is just one listing. Why not go pick like 15, 20 listings like this to sell on? And that's 14,000 a month if you pick 20. So two cents there. Um, but yeah, this is the number of sellers. Now, this is also something to keep in mind too, because generally when there's more sellers, the price will come down. So you can see right here um, that when the no sellers got low right here, the price started spiking up really high. And that's actually when the price was the highest and the sellers were only you know, 25, 30. But now that the sellers are a little more right here, you can see actually the price. If we zoom in on this, let's just zoom in so we can see this a little clearly here. Price, The bottom price tier was about 27 for FPM. And then it dropped down to 26 as the seller count rose. And now the FBM price is 24. And now it's also 24 still as well with 100. So what's going to happen is this price is going to consistently going to keep yo-yoing over time because of the change of the actual demographics of the number of sellers on the listing. So for example, right here, there's, 70, there's 81 people on this listing. The current buy box is $29. But if you come down here when, there, when there's only 50 sellers on the listing, price is $34, right? So the price increased by $4. And this is only about a three-week difference, right? So the price is consistently changing on Amazon. So we use something called an AI repricer, and that's what basically kind of keeps this up and going. All right, so now we know the buy box is. Now, this little blue bar right here, the reason that blue bar is important is because if the buy box for some reason goes away, which means, and there's some, don't ask me why, please, because it's a big, long explanation. But the quickest explanation is, is that Amazon has their own AI software, obviously plugged in, and they use a bunch of different algorithms across the markets. And for example, if this exact sock comes up on target for $15, then Amazon's going to see this price as overpriced. And if they see it as overpriced, sometimes the buy box can go away. Also different fluctuations in their AI that kind of trigger some, you know, the buy box going away. And so if you see, don't see the pink line, that means the buy box is non-existent. And if you scroll up right here, you wouldn't actually see this. You would just see, see all other offers and you could still buy on that listing, but there's actual just no physical buy box like there is right here. All right, let's kind of keep going here. Now, there's a bunch of different data that I look at when I'm trying to decide if I want to buy something or if I don't want to buy something. For example, one of the biggest data points is obviously number of sellers, but also as well, like what can I consistently sell the price at? So for example, if I wanted to buy this right here for $13, I would want to sell it for 33, 34 bucks. Now, the current buy box right now is $29. Now, if I sell for $29, that's going to bring my profit down to $5 versus $9. And I would prefer to sell this obviously at $34. So what I could do is I could say, you know what, how much actually of this 8,400 sales is the volume pushing on this particular variation at the $34 price point? So we can actually see that specific data. So we come in here to data. First off, again, this is split up by variation. So this is only for this white large sock right here. We look at the product detail page. We can click on offers here. And when we click on offers, we can see actually what people are currently priced at. So this person's lowest price right here is about $31, 31, you know, nine or something or something like that. Um, and if we scroll up here, we can see actually who's selling it. This person actually, you know, had 55 in stock. Now this right here is an FC transfer. He didn't sell 55 in one day. 
but this is his stock history, right? So same thing for this as well. This guy did not sell, um, you know, 45 in one day, even though he probably could have because the listing is selling that much. Again, it's selling 8,400 times per month. If we just divided this um, and assume that this variation is getting 50% of the sales, we can actually see that really quick here. There's one way to say that, see that without having to look at this. So looks like the white version is actually winning about 64% of the time. And this is just guesstimated by the number of ratings. Um, we could also just see that here as well, probably just by seeing the total. But again, this total is off right here as well, because we don't even have included historical offers clicked. So if we do include historical offers, you can see that people that have, hop have hopped off the listing that are currently not on the listing anymore, there's 2,500 sales per month on this listing. But again, this is wrong probably. Um, but anyways, let's keep going here. Um, so what I would like to do is I'd like to see at the $34 price point, who has it at $34 and how much have they actually been selling, right? So for example, what I would like to specifically see, let's just filter out Prime because we're not worried about anybody else that doesn't have Prime currently. Let's just look for Prime on Amazon only sellers. And the good news is, is the lowest price right now for Prime, it looks like, is about $31. Bucks. That's what, kind of what I'm seeing here. Um, now, if we do include historical offers, we can kind of see some other people that were selling this. It looks like this person had a bunch in stock and he was actually selling them all right here at the $34 price point, selling them at the $33 price point. You can see right here, this is a, he got 169 in stock, it FC transferred. And as it FC transferred, the stock kept, kept, kept checking back in and it was sold, Check kept checking back in and it sold. So all these little ups and downs are right here. Um, I know FC transfers probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you. So let me kind of explain what an FC transfer is. It's when you send your product into Amazon and then Amazon says, you know what? These four different warehouses across the country need your product. And it's going to split your product all across the country. And so your product is like moving from one warehouse to another. That's what an FC transfer is. Uh, yep. So this person got 36 in stock at FC transfer. And they came in, came in, came in, sold and sold it all. Sold it at $31 price point. That's pretty good. Looks like we can very consistently know that we're going to sell this for at least 33, 34 bucks as long as we're patient. That's kind of what I'm seeing. Now, the current price point right now has dipped a little bit. So these, these higher price spike points are only at $31 when they used to be at $34. So I think what, what we would do is we'd probably just wait on this on maybe like, you know, a couple of weeks. There's no way that the volume is not going to be able to support these 100 sellers. The, vol there's, the volume is so high on this particular listing. It's going to be able to be supported on the specific heap of graph. So I would imagine that you see how this comes up right here. It's gonna come up, come down just as quickly right here as well. So it's about to start coming down. That just means basically those are probably a really good deal on maybe Kohl's.com or some other place that sells Nike and a bunch of other people it's exactly like myself are buying it here and you can see that they did that. If you wait two or three more weeks, the price will be back up to normal because again, there's so much volume on this listing. Even when it does spike up, you can see right here to 80 sellers, don't fret, it's gonna come right back down because there's so much volume on this particular listing. And as long as you're patient, you should be able to sell this for a price for $33. Um, and the data does support that you can sell for $33 just by looking at the data and the variations tab. So this is kind of the basics when it comes down to, you know, reading and keep a chart. This is the analysis that I would do when I'm saying, hmm, can I sell this product for $33? That's the price I would like to sell that. I know I can get it for $13. I want to sell it for $33 because this makes more sense for me standpoint. And I know that this white variation is getting about 65% of all these 8,300 sales. So we take 8,300 sales and divide that by... Um, or actually, excuse me, we just times that. Let's do it. Take 8,300 times 0.65. And that's going to get us 5,400 sales basically per month. So that's going to be 5,400. The sales are going to come from the white. The other amount of sales are all coming from the black, which is, again, only 35% of the actual sales right here. So there's 5,400 sales to go along with this white variation. There's currently 100 people on there. So 5,400 divided by 100. That's 54 sales you know, per person, there's no way that people actually have that much in stock. If you actually currently look here and see how much people have in stock, I would say a lot of people, some people like this guy only have like five or 10, um, like this guy's completely sold out. You see how fast people are selling out when they come in stock and the people with higher prices, they're, sl they're selling them a little slower, but they're still selling them. Um, so like, for example, this guy had 160 in stock. He can't, he, he can't even keep them in stock. He's selling them so, so fast. Uh, and they come and they go and they come and they go. So this this listing definitely supports the volume. Uh, but yeah, this is exactly how I would read to keep a chart. Hopefully all this made sense. And again, I know I kind of went fast. So you're probably thinking to yourself, whoa, this is a lot of information. I break this down way 
easier to understand and small bits and pieces of information inside my coaching program because ultimately what it comes down to is reading the keeper charts, understanding how different variations react in the market when it comes down to sales, how the price is going to react. That's how we're going to make our money. All of our decisions are based on data and data alone. So hope you guys enjoyed this really in-depth throw. I love getting geeky here and talking about keep chart. It's really fun to me. So see you soon. Peace.